This is the Hover Air X1, a fully autonomous drone that is meant to be your flying selfie camera. And I have seen this before, this type of drone. This is a newer version, but I've seen this type of drone before and thought, you know, I have DJI drones. I have uh, drones that can do that. So why would I need a little drone like this? It has to do with the effortlessness of using this little guy. Now, when it comes to my other drones, yes, they have follow modes and stuff like that and some pretty cool modes that grab some interesting photos and video. But with the Hover Air, it is completely effortless. I don't need to have controls. I don't need to have all of these things that complicate the process. It's as simple as selecting a mode, letting it take off and do its thing. Whether it's following me around the front yard or chasing my kids and getting some fun shots, just capturing those everyday moments or trying to capture something like a jog or a bike ride. In the past, I wouldn't get footage of these types of activities because it required carrying a bigger drone, carrying either a smartphone or a control or perhaps both. And that's just too much. Much. But this is about the size of a phone. I mean, it weighs about the same as my iPhone 15 Pro Max. And so this folds up into a nice compact little package and I could tuck this away in a bag. It's very easy and it doesn't get in the way. Now, what's great about this little drone is it folds out and it's meant to be fully autonomous without the need of a control. Of course, there are some things that you can do with the control, but mostly everything you can do right from the top of the device itself. So it's very simple to launch. You simply turn it on, you select a mode, and you press the button, and it will audibly tell you what it's going to do. From there, it takes off from your hand and then positions itself for the move that it's about to perform. So whether it's going to remain still and track you as you move around, or it's gonna follow you as you go down a path or walk around or fly up above you to get a bird's eye view. And it does all that without the need of a control. Now, right from the device itself, it has five user controllable settings, and these are for the different flight modes. So you can easily do a follow, an orbit, a bird's eye view, or a zoom out simply by just tapping the button and selecting which mode you want the drone to perform in. Now within the app, there's additional modes that you can unlock, and of course you can control this manually if you wanted to. But its true power is in its autonomous features and its ability to just do what it needs to do without manual control from you. Now the drone will shoot up to 2.5K gimbal stabilized footage, and so you've got a gimbal here that will adjust and reposition the drone for nice smooth footage and of course to follow you around. Now, I was surprised at how fast and nimble this drone was. I launched it and had it follow my kids around as they ran around the front yard, making this drone really turn and, and work hard to try and stay on them. And it did a relatively good job. It even did a good job avoiding obstacles like chairs and different things that we had in our yard. And it even managed to stay locked on to the subject without getting confused when other people entered the shot. Now, in the few rare instances is that it did lose tracking. It simply stopped and hovered in position, which I felt was a safe thing to do until I came over and placed my hand under the drone so that the drone would land in my hand. It's very easy to use this drone. You simply turn it on. Once it's powered up, you select your mode and then press the button and hold the drone out. So if you're going selfie, you're going to point the camera at yourself at about an arm's length out. It's gonna identify you, take off, and then perform the mode that you chose. It will continue in that mode until you come up to the drone and position your hand underneath it, in which it will recognize your hand and it will come and land down in your hand. Now, because there's prop guards all the way around this, you're not at any risk of hurting yourself. It simply lands flat on your hand with the props protected by the prop guards, and then it powers itself off. Every single time I've done this, it's landed perfectly on my hand and powered off without me worrying about it falling and tumbling to the ground. Once the motor's shut off and it's safely in your hand, you can power the drone off by pushing and holding the power button and then fold it right back into its stowaway position in which you could put it in a bag and move on to your next activity. Now this drone was able to keep up with me. If I'm running or riding my bike, this drone had enough power to go. Now, of course, the faster that you go, Go, which means the faster the drone has to go, that's going to chip into your battery life a little bit. But you can buy it with a battery combo kit, which comes with this charger and an additional battery. So I have the two battery kit here. They also have a three battery kit as well. 
If you plan to take this thing out and do a bit of flying and, and you really want to get a bit of footage, I highly recommend getting the three battery kit as I was averaging about 12 to 15 minutes of battery life if there was good action going on. If it was more hovering and not a whole lot of moving that the drone had to do, I would see closer to 20 minutes of battery life. And I never really flew it for 20 minutes consistently. I would fly it for two or three minutes, turn it off, fly it for another two or three minutes, turn it off, getting multiple clips and usually averaging somewhere between 15 to 18 minutes on a battery if we're standing still and not moving. And like I said, closer to 10 to 12 minutes or so if we're moving quickly. So it's nice to have an extra battery. They simply just pop right out of the charger like so. And then you could position a couple more into the charger. And then it's USB-C, which means you can charge this with the same thing that you would charge your cell phone with. And in most instances, when I'm out with my drones or other cameras, I bring this charge battery brick, which allows me USB-C and USB-A outputs. And I could charge these batteries, probably each battery close to a dozen times off of this thing. And so just USB-C from this right into the Hover X1 and I've got plenty of battery life and the batteries charge pretty quickly. So let's take a look at the app. When you open the app, you get uh, other user generated content, new content and featured content. And then you can also share your moments here as well and upload them to be part of the user generated content. We've got the hover screen, which uh, it's powered off right now, but if it was powered on, it would give me the ability to connect to the drone and launch the drone from this page as well. Under flight modes, we have all of these different flight modes that we can take a look at and it shows exactly what they are, and each flight mode will perform different functions. There are also some flight modes that you can unlock with more experience of having used the drone. And then under the Me tab is just information about your user account and your drone. When you're connected to the drone and powered up, you're able to download all of your footage off of the drone into your phone. That's probably the best way to do it. It's just after you capture a clip and play it back and decide that's one that you want saved to your phone, you just simply download it. And when you download it, then it is in your Photos app and you're able to share that on social media edit it or do whatever else you would like with your footage. So due to its compact nature, there are definitely a few little drawbacks and things to keep in mind when using this drone. First of all, it's very compact and the camera is really small. That means that it's really gonna perform its best during ideal situation where there's good lighting outside and the drone doesn't have to navigate too many darker, dimly lit situations. It's a very small sensor on this camera and it's a trade-off of its compact size. This being as light and as small as it is, it doesn't have the room or the space for a camera that's as good as your smartphone. So while it does capture really good footage and I was really impressed at the footage that it captured and even at its ability to maintain an even exposure as it's pointing towards the sun, it's pointing away from the sun, it goes kind of into a shady situation. I was pretty impressed at how it was able to respond. Granted, it's not as good as my bigger drones or maybe even my smartphone, but it's able to capture a perspective that I wouldn't be able to get otherwise. I was also impressed at how it actually followed a subject. When it was following my daughter and she went up the stairs, it followed her up the stairs. And then as she came back down the stairs, it positioned and flew back around her and then flew down and lowered itself, maintaining the right altitude to present a nice shot that seemed well balanced as far as camera position and the movement as the camera went into position and followed her. I like to think of this as a lightweight GoPro that can follow me around capturing action shots without me having to mount the camera or really do anything. It just flies, follows, and captures shots. So while the Hover X1 is not going to replace any of my bigger drones, it's definitely going to have a place in my camera bag for those situations where I want to get B-roll, I want to get follow shots that I wouldn't be able to get unless I had somebody following me around with a smartphone. Though there are limitations that come with the compact nature of this drone, it's certainly able to capture shots that you just wouldn't be able to get otherwise. And that's where the true utility is in this little drone. I've got a link down in the description to the drone for you to check out the price and the different options that are available. It definitely surprised me at how useful something like this is, considering most of the other options for flying cameras are just too complex for most situations I find myself in. Let me know what you think about the Hover X1 in the comment section below. If you have any questions, ask down there as well. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in the next one.